Hey, this is Jen from That's La Plan and I'm coming to you today with my top tips for planning your next family self-drive ski holiday. So, check it out. Me and Mr. Sang are in the middle of yet another family road trip for our sins with the kids and working and living in the mountains, all of our journeys take at least an hour just to get to the supermarket. So we are seasoned pros at driving around in the mountains. Okay, with the rising and ongoing cost of living crisis, we're seeing more and more families deciding to drive to their next ski holiday. But don't panic, it's not as scary as you might think. And I've done a lot of the hard work for you. So here are the things that I would recommend you do if you're thinking about driving to your next family ski holiday. One of the biggest pros of a family ski holiday is all of the extra time you get to spend together. Yay! While the kids watch their screens and have their headphones on. Another great reason to drive with your family to your ski holiday is all of the extra space that you've got. No luggage allowance, no weight limits. So if you've got ski equipment, boots and skis and snowboard bags and stuff like that, you're more likely to be able to fit it all in your car. But my absolute top tip whenever I talk to people about packing for their ski holidays is look at whatever you're planning on bringing with you and then just put half of it back because you are going to spend 90% of your time in your ski gear, whether it's your thermals and your layers or actually your salopettes and jacket. Even if you go out for dinner and things in the evening you're going to put all your nice clothes on and then you're going to put a ski jacket on over the top of it so don't let all the space lure you into a false sense of security half the amount of stuff you bring you with you you'll feel so much better for it when you get to resort and if you want to know some secret top tips about the things you really do need to bring with you and the stuff that you can just forget about bringing check out all my family packing checklists it's got everything in there from the medical equipment and emergency documents you're going to need to things that you want to pack for babies and toddlers and children on your next ski holiday it's got absolutely everything in there that i tell my families and friends to bring with them every time they come to visit me and it's tried and tested with the locals here and the ski instructors so go and have a look Another fun side effect of Brexit and Covid is that the airports cannot find enough staff to man the security check-ins and the passport control and stuff like that. So you will find that some of the check-in queues take forever and whilst they might advise two hours to get through passport control, sometimes it takes three to four hours which is absolutely insane, especially if you are travelling with family and young children. So driving to your next ski holiday will just mean you bypass all of this hassle of all the queues and the check-ins and the check-outs which any parent will tell you is one of the most annoying things when you're traveling with family and young children is the constant having to line up move from place to place and join different queues and different lines if you just drive then you skip all of that you sit in your car from door one to door two sorted if you're driving to your family ski holiday make sure that you have planned out your route in advance and that you know where you're going to on our absolute top tip that we both learned last time was don't just leave your maps on your phone because it will die and you won't know where you're going which is exactly what happened to us last weekend so just make sure you've at least got a list of your checkpoints written out somewhere or you know roughly what direction you're heading in otherwise you're going to end up sat in mcdonald's charging your phone back up Make sure you set yourself a budget. Um, that not only includes how much it's gonna cost for your crossing on the ferry or the channel tunnel, but it's things like the toll roads, fuel, parking once you get into resort. It's all those bits and pieces, they can really add up. And while self-driving family ski holidays can be actually a cheaper option than flying and ski holiday transfers, um, do just factor in all those little costs so that they don't take you by surprise at the end of the holiday. One of the biggest questions I always get from families when they're talking about self-drive family ski holidays is how are we going to keep the kids entertained on a long road trip well i'm here for you with my top tips and the things that we have tried and tested that have made all the difference for our family check it out one of the biggest things that we've learned when we've been traveling is that new is better than old and by new i don't mean go and buy yourself loads of new stuff for the kids i mean go to a charity shop swap with friends just dig some stuff out that they've not seen for a while and they will be entertained by the novelty of something they've not seen for ages so definitely do that the things that we look at then are books coloring books activity books stickers like reusable stickers washable crayons and stuff like that small travel toys with movable parts things that you're not going to be too worried about um losing or breaking whilst you're away on your holidays they are uh, the absolute go-to things and then of course screens so however you feel about ipads or tablets or uh, phones and things like that they are an absolute lifesaver as you can see. Um, I would recommend uh, getting some headphones if you want your kids to listen to their stuff while you're in the car or moving through airports. 
If you're nervous of using screens or it's the first time that you've used them or you want to limit the amount of time your kids are using screens, then one good option is to use audiobooks or podcasts. There's a really great app called Pinner that I like that your kids can use and it lets them navigate around and pick and choose the things that they want to listen to, but they're not sat there glued to a screen watching cartoon after cartoon after cartoon. So audiobooks, or you can find podcasts that are family friendly that you can all listen to. So depending on what age your children are, things like the Harry Potter series or Noughts and Crosses or even the Hunger Games, stuff like that can be really fun and enjoyable to listen to. We've actually listened to Harry Potter book one from uh, La Plan all the way back to the UK and the first book lasted as the exact journey from the top of La Plan to the ferry in Calais so there you go that one will work for you if you're planning a long trip with your family whether it's a ski holiday or just a long family road trip one of the best things that you can do for your own mental health but also for the comfort of your family and your kids is to factor in some breaks and take some time to just stretch your legs so this might be if you're going through France stopping at one of the airs and the picnic stops so that you can all just have a wander around or it might be planning some sightseeing and actually going exploring the area on the way either way plan your journey and work those things into your schedule trust me your butt and your parent uh, your kids will thank you for it and finally one of the things that you always need to do if you're planning a long road trip or a self-drive ski holiday with your family and your kids is always expect the unexpected uh, easier said than done while i'm recording this right now we are jam-packed stuck in traffic which we did not expect so what are you going to do? Um, from when our kids were tiny little babies, we had these bags called the Oh Crap Bag. And they basically, when they were babies, had all the stuff for emergency nappy changes or changes of outfits for us and stuff like that. But as the kids have got older, they've progressed and they've got different bits and pieces in. So it might be just some surprises like their favourite snacks, some go-to card games or books and toys and things. Just stuff that you can rely on if you are stuck in the car longer than you expected to be, you are lost or just the unexpected has happened so just have some surprises up your sleeve trust me you'll thank me for it and if you're really struggling then check out the link that's around this video somewhere and I've got some links to my tried and trusted tested oh crap bags which you can steal and make the most of so good luck this has been Jen from That's La Plan and those are my top tips for your self-drive family ski holidays or just your long road trips with your family. I hope you found it useful. Uh, check out the links around this video that will help you out with your packing and your planning. And if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. Happy driving and bon voyage.